so the person who is liable to pay tax or any other sum of money in the form of penalty or interest to the tax authority that person will be called as assessee so the word assessment here is explained under section 2 subsection 9 of the income tax act 1961 total income is your gross income from all sources less certain deductions such as expenses allowances and relief Hello everyone, I am Arun Kumar, lecturer in Department of Commerce and Management, Vidyashram First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence, Mysore. Dear students, welcome to this new session on unit number one. The concept is basic concepts of income tax. Yes, dear students, in this particular session, we are going to study about the basic concepts which comes under the Income Tax Act 1961. So first, if you look into the basic concepts, the first thing is, we are going to know about the word assessee. No one of you knows about this word assessee. Okay. So this word comes only under the Income Tax Act. So what is this assessee? What does this word assessee tell about? So if you look into the meaning of this word assessee as per the Income Tax Act 1961. So here the Income Tax Act of 1961, it explains the word assessee under section 2 subsection 7. So the word assessee refers to any person who is liable to pay tax or any other sum of money. Okay. Assessee is nothing but any person who is liable to pay tax or any other sum of money in the form of penalty or in the form of interest to the income tax authority, that person is called as an assessee. That means if a doctor is there and if any person go to a doctor what is that person is called if you fall sick if you go to a doctor what doctor call you the doctor call you as patient okay next if you have some problem legal problem what you will do you go and consult the lawyer so what the lawyer call you the lawyer call you as client right and if you want to go and purchase some items in a shop what the shopkeeper call you the shopkeeper call you as the consumer or they will call you as customer okay so in marketing we have different terminologies in legal sector we have different terminologies in medical sector we have different terminologies in the same way in tax we have different terminologies so the person who is liable to pay tax or any other sum of money in the form of penalty or interest to the tax authority that person will be called as assessee okay so now who are all called assessee so the word assessee it includes an individual it includes an individual and it also includes hindu undivided family that is huf and it, it includes company firm partnership firm association of person that is aop and body of individual local authority and artificial judicial Okay, so here the word assessee refers to any person who is liable to pay tax or any other sum of money in the form of penalty or interest to the tax authority is called assessee and that word assessee includes any individual, HUF, company, partnership firm, association of person, body of individual, municipal corporation, local authority and artificial judicial persons. So this is the meaning of the word assessee so if you are paying tax to the government then you are also called what assessee if your father is paying tax to the government then what your father is called is called assessee if your father is running a company and if he is earning profit from that company if he is paying the tax to the government on behalf of that company then again that company is also called assessee and your father is also called assessee i hope you understood the meaning of the word assessee next moving on person so who is called person person is defined under section 2 subsection 31 of the income tax act 1961 so again here person means the people who are all going to pay the tax to the government those people will be called as person right so who are all the people paying tax to the government those people are called as a person so who and all will comes as a person and who and all pays tax to the government if you look into that an individual will pay tax to the government, HEF that is Hindu undivided family will pay tax to the government, 
and a firm will pay tax to the government, company and association of person, body of individual, artificial person and any artificial judicial persons. So these all people are called person. Okay. So if any case is there against any person, any SSC, what the authority will say? Call that person. So who is that person? That person may be a company or may be a business entity, may be an individual, may be a HUF or may be a body of individual, whoever it is, that person will be called as person. And the word person is described under section or it is explained under section 2, subsection 31 of the Income Tax Act 1961. And the word person, it includes an individual, HUF, partnership firm, company, association of person, body of individual and any local authority and also artificial juridical person. So this is the meaning of the word person. Moving further, assessment year. So what is assessment year? So the word assessment year is explained under section 2 subsection 9 of the Income Tax Act 1961 and assessment year may be defined as a year in which the income tax of the previous year is to be assessed. Yes, in simple term we can say assessment year is nothing but the year which the tax is paid. Okay, the year in which the tax is paid on the previous year income that is called the assessment year. Okay, so assessment year is nothing but it is a year in which the tax is paid on the previous year income on the previous financial year that is called the assessment year and also we can include another definition that is assessment year it is a period of 12 months starting from 1st April 2000 that is 1st April of every year and ends with 31st March of next year. So 1st April of every year ends with 31st March of next year is called the assessment year. So what is our assessment year now? That is 1st April 2023 and ends on 31st March 2024. This is our assessment year. So assessment year is a period of 12 months starting from 1st April and ends with 31st March of next year and it is a year which the tax is collected on the previous year income that is called assessment year. It is explained under section 2 subsection 9 of the Income Tax Act. Next previous year. Yes, previous year is explained under section 3 of the Income Tax Act of 1961. So what is this previous year? Again, previous year is a period of 12 months. Yes. Previous year is a period of 12 months and it starts from 1st April ends with 31st March. So previous year is also a period of 12 months starting from 1st April of every year ends with 31st March of next year and it is a year in which the income is earned. In which year you are going to earn the income that year is called previous year. So what is our previous year now? The Our present previous year is 1-4-2022 to 31st March 2023. So our present previous year is 1-4-2022 to 31st March 2023. This is our present previous year. So now what is the meaning of previous year? Previous year is a period of 12 months starting from 1st April of every year and ends with 31st March of next year and it is a year in which the income is earned that is called previous year that is the meaning of the word previous year. Next moving further gross total income. So what is this gross total income? Gross total income means aggregate amount of taxable income computed under five heads of income yes under income tax we have five heads of income so which are those five heads of income we have those five heads of incomes are income from salary income from house property income from business and profession income from capital gain and income from other sources so under income tax we have five heads of 
taxes or five different types of incomes okay five different heads of incomes or five different types of incomes those five types are income from salary income from house property business and profession capital gain and other sources so what and all the types of incomes we have and if you are earning the income from different heads of incomes under the income tax if you are earning incomes from all these heads of income so what you will do you are going to total this you are going to grand total this this grand total is called what gross total income the grand total of all five heads of income is called gross total income so which are those five heads of income income from salary house property business and profession capital gain and other sources so that is what the statement says gross total income means the aggregate amount of taxable income computed under five heads of income that is income from salary house property business and profession capital gain and other sources and in other words gross total income means total income computed in accordance with the provisions of the act before making any deductions under section 80c to ATU. So, before giving the deduction under section 80C to ATU, what is the total value we will get? The total value is called what? Gross total income. Simply you can say the total of all the five heads of income is called gross total income. That is the meaning of the word gross total income according to the Income Tax Act. Next, moving further, it is total income. So, what is total income? Total income is your gross income from all sources less certain deductions such as expenses, allowances and relief. So what and all the incomes you will earn? What and all the incomes you will earn from five heads of income that is income from salary, income from house property, income from business and profession. Next income from capital gain and income from other sources. So here you are earning income from different debts of income and you want to total this. So this total is called what? This total is called gross total income. In short, we will call it as GTI, gross total income. So from this gross total income, you are going to deduct some deductions. Okay, you are going to deduct some deductions, provisions, reliefs, whatever we call. So those deductions comes under section 80C to 80U. So you deduct it. So what is the balance you will get? This balance is called what? Total income. The balance is called total income. So we are going to total all five heads of incomes together. The total is called gross total income. From that gross total income, we are going to deduct the deductions under section 80C to 80U, which are applicable to a person. After deducting the deductions or reliefs or provisions, whatever the balance we will get, this balance is called total income so this is the meaning of the word total income i hope all of you understood let us move on exempted incomes under section 10 yes few incomes are exempted under section 10 as per the income tax rule of 1961 so why they give exemption see with some intention with some intention the government is giving exemptions on certain incomes even though you are earning lakh rupees, you need not to pay tax to the government. Okay. So, which are those incomes? Why they are giving exemption? So, sometimes they have to give exemptions in order to entertain them or in order to motivate them. Sometimes they have to give exemption if it is government work. So, keeping all this in mind, the government is giving some relief or exemption for few incomes under section 10 of the income tax rule. So, which are those exemptions which are there under section 10? The first one is agriculture income under section 10 subsection 1. If any person is earning any agricultural income, he need not to pay tax to the government. If your father is a farmer, if he is earning 1 lakh rupees, it's his profit. On 1 lakh rupees, he need not to pay tax to the government because it is exempted from tax. So, why agriculture income is exempted from tax? Because if it goes on imposing more tax on farmers, then what farmers will do? Farmers, they stop cultivating. If they stop cultivating, from where you will get food? So, in order to motivate them, in order to increase the population of farmers. Population in the sense, 
in order to increase the people to get into the farming work, what they did, they exempted the agricultural income as per the rule 10 of the Income Tax Act. Next, share of income from partnership firm. See, you are running a partnership, okay? Mr. A and B are partners, those two are running a partnership. Whatever the income they earn from partnership, first they have to pay tax to the government. Then later on, whatever the balance is there, that balance will be distributed among the two partners. So whatever the balance they are sharing each other, that balance is what they are receiving after paying the tax, right? Then why again they have to pay tax? So there is no concept of tax on tax in India. That is why any share of income received from partnership firm, it is not taxable. It is exempt under section 10. Next, share of income from HEF. If you are living in a joint family, so before distributing the profit to the member of the joint family, they are supposed to pay tax under the income tax rule, then they are supposed to distribute. So if the amount what you are receiving, it is if it is after tax, then why again you are supposed to pay tax? That is why this income received from HEF, share of profit received from HEF, it is also exempt under section 10. Next, scholarships. So any scholarships received by any students, it is also exempt from tax. They need not to pay tax to the government because it is given for this educational purpose. Next, income as divided section 10, subsection 34 and 35. So if any income received with respect to this, it is also exempted under section 10. Next, Capital gain on transfer of under section 64. Yes, if any capital gain receives, okay, that is also exempted from tax. Next, allowances of MP MLA, allowances of MP MLA, that is also exempted. Capital gain on compulsory acquisition of urban agriculture land. If any compulsory acquisition happens in urban agriculture land, if they are receiving compensation for that, that is also exempted. That compensation, what they receive, it is also exempted from tax. So with this, I'm going to wind up this session. I'll come up with few more new videos in the upcoming session. Until then, thank you all. Have a nice day. Namaste.